church. And so when we do that, heaven gives us instructions. And what the enemy is trying to do is the enemy is trying to distract us. And there's a lot of distractions out there going on, you know? Uh, and, and we have to be very discerning and, and what's going on. And some of the things that I wrote, to, uh, wrote down today, and before we get into worship, I'm going to open up in prayer and we look forward to Pastor Ryan's word and hopefully there's some confirmation uh, to what he's going to minister today. Uh, you know, the Bible says that there's going to be a day where they're going to call good evil and call evil good and we're seeing that we're like living right in the midst of all that so we need to be in constant prayer as a church and we're going to do that today but also read from psalms 145 19 where it says if you want to go there it's psalms 145 19 and if I can have Pastor Ryan quickly look up Haggai chapter 1, verse 14. Haggai chapter 1, verse 14. But let me read this from Psalms 145, 19. Let me, let, me, let me go up to verse 17, and I'll read it down in Psalms. The Lord is righteous. Amen. It, it doesn't say the Lord was righteous or in a past tense. It says the Lord is righteous, is righteous, and he is righteous all the time. It says in all his ways. God is righteous in all his ways. Amen. Uh, the Bible does never says that God is fair, but he's just. Okay. And he's righteous. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. It doesn't say he was near. It says he is near to those who call upon him. To all who call upon him in what? Truth. Truth. There's a lot of truth. There's a lot of people says my truth is my truth and your truth is your truth. But God says my truth is what matters. He will fulfill the desires of those who fear him. You know, there, there's a lack of the fear of the Lord, you know, and that's, and, and we kind of wonder what that word fear means. It means in reverence, we, we lack the fear of the Lord in our society and in our culture. He also will hear the cry and save them. The Lord preserves, here it is, the Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked, he will, you understand? He will destroy. So he will fulfill the desires of those who fear him. The Lord preserves all who love him. But all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praises of the Lord, and all flesh shall bless him. Bless his holy name forever and ever. And I want to, I want um, Pastor Ryan to read Haggai chapter 1, verse 14. So the Lord, Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Sheol, yeah. governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jerozodak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. So what does it say? It said the Lord stirred the hearts of what? You see, there's a government involved there, Right? Uh, Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, right? You see the high priest and the church. You see there's a, pro you know, so, and there's a prophet involved there too as well. 
So we're asking and praying that God will stir the hearts of people. When God stirs the hearts of people, something amazing is going to take place. Amen? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this morning as we have declared your word today. And Father, in, in the society, we're, we're living in a place in time where good is called evil and evil is called good. Father, but we stand in your righteousness, Father. We stand as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, Father. And we declare and decree your word today that your righteousness will go across all the earth. Your glory will cover the earth. Father, as we stand and declare and decree your word. Father, we, we pray for our president, which I believe the Lord said to me, he is a righteous man. And that is why we're seeing all this stirring because a righteous man, see, we're not righteous in our works, folks. Are you with me today? It's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but what Christ has done for us. So, uh, so the Lord says he is righteous in what he is doing. And we're seeing demonic uh, manifestations going on in the earth. And the Lord said to me, don't be deceived. You see the underlining things. You see, they, they tried to do all these things and it, it, they all failed. So they needed a distraction. They needed a red flag mm -hmm. to get our minds off of all, these, of all the things that are really taking place in the earth. So, Father, we expose every deception and we ask your light to dispel all darkness in the name of Jesus, Father. And we, we dispatch angels to go around the White House, Father. There was, there was talks of, of uh, massive groups flooding the White House to provoke another Kent State, Ohio incident. Father, this is evil. Father, this is deception. This is those trying to take out your righteous cause. But we stand in the gap, Father. We stand in the gap. We, st we plug up the gap that has been breached, Father. And we declare your kingdom come, your will be done. And I heard the Lord say, this too will backfire. Every attempt is backfiring. So, Father... We thank you that it will backfire and righteousness will be restored in the land, Father God. We pray for our police department. Father, they want to defund the police department. But yet, there, but yet I seen on TV there was a protester that threw a rock at a, at, a, uh, at a van and a guy got out and said, you want to throw rocks at my van? And what did the protester say? Call the police. The very thing they want to defund is the very ones that they want to call upon. So, Father, we, we pray for our police departments, those in leadership in our, in our communities, Father. Lord, I believe COVID hysteria is starting to dwindle, and we're starting to see the hypocrisy, Father. Lord, we pray that we will not be deceived, that we will truly see what's happening and we speak to it through the word of the Lord, the sword of the spirit. We bless you today, Father. We thank you, Father, for your word that it says, you will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. Father, we fear you today. We fear you in a good way, Father. And we come with reverence. We come with awe. We come as sons and daughters as of the Most High God. 
and we declare your word to go forth, Father. We just open up this time in worship. And I just ask and pray as we worship that the peace of God will come upon you during this time in Jesus' name. You give life. You give life. 
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Great are you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father. Can we just thank the Lord for his goodness? Right there where you're at in your place, in your living room, in your home, just thank the Lord. Take a moment and thank him. Can, can, can everybody unmute so I can hear all the thanksgiving and all the wonderful... Thank you, thank you Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, your righteousness will stand, Father God. Uh, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And we thank you for it, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that there's peace in the midst of all the chaos. I was uh, took a picture of some uh, sun drops that are blooming in my front lawn. And I have a lighthouse that uh, Bob gave me. Bob Schwer gave me. And it just... It just, it just was a picture of peace. You know, all this light that's blooming and then you have this lighthouse uh, that, that, that gives off light. It, it attracts the sun because it's a solar lighthouse. And last night uh, I go out in the front porch and there was such a great peace in the atmosphere. And, and this lighthouse that Bob gave me was shining, you know? And then this morning, there's all these wonderful yellow flowers around it and this light, you know. So the life and the light of God brings life. And, and it just gave me a sense of peace with all this stuff that's going on. So I, I pray that for you today in the name of Jesus. So uh, Lynette's going to come on and she's going to share. And then we're going to give it over to Pastor Ryan to minister the word of the Lord. And then we want to hear from you at the end of the service, and we'll have a time of prophetic praying and, and release. Amen? Amen. Hello. <laughs> um, just like he was saying, we are, you know, the light, how the light shines, and that lighthouse was shining, and then the uh, God's light uh, shine, you know, up these flowers and everything, and these sun drops. Um, I picked Matthew 5, 14 to 16, that you are the light of the world. So we are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and, and gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light be sh shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Heavenly Father, amen. So let, dear Heavenly Lord Jesus, we just thank you for letting us be the light. Thank you for being the light in us, Lord Jesus. We just thank you and praise your holy name for what you are doing and what you're about to do in uh, this world, Lord Jesus. And I just uh, pray for the protection over um, us, Lord Jesus, in this world, Lord Jesus, and let them come to know you, the people that don't know you. Let the light shines so that they walk towards it. So we just thank you and praise your holy name. And we pray for Ryan, Pastor Ryan today, as he gives you the, the word that you instilled in his heart. And we just thank you and praise your holy name for everybody that attend. In dear Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And another thing, if you would like to give an offering, uh, you could uh, send it to NVL Church at P.O. Box 22 nine Pottstown PA or you could go to the website to elchurch.com and hit the donate button. Thank you. All right, amen. Yep, if you're if you're if you're in math you already stay there because we're actually going there first. So but it is it is confirmation. You know if you remember at the beginning of this year, both Apostle, myself, I think Jane, everybody had a, a 2020 outlook, what the Lord was saying to them. And, and if you remember, the one thing that I had said for, for mine, I was looking for it, I can't find it, but I remember the, the gist of it. It was 2020, not only is for, you know, perfect vision, but we're also going to see this year things that have been put in the dark. I was, I, I was one thing the Lord was speaking to me, things that have been kept in the dark and 
things that have, you know, people have been trying to use and backstab, guess what, 2020, everything, to, you know, whatever you've done in the dark is going to be brought out into the light. That's and right. I, and, and just as Apostle was saying, you know, that's, that's going to be confirmation is, 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 it's already been happening. This whole sickness thing, bringing broad into the light. Well, now, oh, all of a sudden, it's not as big of a deal. Because what? Mm -hmm. Another distraction has been thrown into your... It's constant distraction after distraction after distraction. That's... And, and, and all the tactics have been are being used as we speak right now. And that's just all they really are is distractions. And that's, that's kind of what I wanted to touch on today. So it is going to be confirmation. I, I, I titled it Love Your Brother because... Right now, obviously, the, the whole corona thing has kind of been put into the back seat. Now we got people at each other's throats. So if you got your Bible, go to Matthew 5. We're going to go down a little bit from where Lynette was. We're going to go 521 is where we're going to start. And while you're getting there, you know, the year 2020 has started off in a way I don't think anyone could have seen coming. From sickness keeping us indoors to mass protests and rioting, it has all come down to one common theme, keeping us divided and separated. Not being able to cohabitate with people like normal has led to a feeling of isolation and even some depression. Then we have people at odds with their fellow man, keeping us at each other's throats under something as trivial as the color of your skin. This isolated, angry, divided feeling is not good and does not help us in any way. In a time like this, I think it's a good opportunity to look and see exactly how we should be acting with each other and treating your brother. And Matthew 5, 21, we'll start there. It says, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. Now, this is obviously going back to the Ten Commandments, don't commit murder. And, you know, Jesus didn't come to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill it. So, in fact, he's going to make it a little bit harder in the coming up here. You know, that word judgment literally just means a separating. It, it means that separating from God. It says you'll be in danger of that separation from God, which you definitely don't want to. Separation from God is, is not good. Let's move on to the next one. It says, but I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Rekha, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Now, some translations actually take that part out, that without a cause. And it's just angry with your brother. And I personally think that that's a little bit better because, you know, having anger in your heart isn't good. Even if someone does you wrong, you should seek to rectify it. I mean, even if there is a cause, you shouldn't use that as an excuse to have any anger in your heart. So what's that word anger mean? It means a strong feeling or showing of annoyance or hostility towards somebody or something. So obviously you're not supposed to have any anger in your heart. You know, everything starts in the heart. That anger in the heart will turn into something more. That's, where, that's why he says murder already started with that anger because the anger will turn into jealousy, which then will turn into something more. And then you're like, you know what? I, I, I think that guy needs to be taken out. It all starts right there. Now, if you're like me, I always read that, and I never knew what that word rack of men. I, I, I had to look it up. If you look it up, it literally means empty-headed. <laughs> it means senseless. It's basically the equivalent of calling someone an airhead or a blockhead or something like that, calling someone an idiot. That's, that's really what it means. And it says that if you call your brother that, you're in danger of the council. But if you say you're a fool, you'll shall be in danger of hellfire. Now, when I first started reading those, reading that, I never actually saw the difference. I thought, well, if you call someone foolish, you know, basically you're calling them an idiot. You know, I could call, to me, it was almost interchangeable, but it's really not. If you look up that term, that you fool, the original term used there was a word called impious. It means not showing any respect towards a God. In this case, it's, it's God himself. So when it says in Proverbs, you know, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. It's, it's somebody that literally has no respect, no reverence, no, no um, line of thinking when it comes to God whatsoever. That's what the fool means. It's someone that has absolutely no respect for that whatsoever. So it's, it's, it's actually a little bit better to call someone an idiot, you blockhead, than to say, hey, you know, you, you have absolutely no respect, no 
dealings with God. You know, you have no looking on the matter whatsoever. If you go down to that next, next line, 23 through 24, it says, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Now, if you notice, it's not the other way around. It's not if you have something against your brother, go and, go and rectify it. Because how many times have you been in that conversation where, you know, you offend somebody and you're like, well, I didn't mean nothing by it. You just go about, well, if, hey, if they want to take it that way, by all means, and then you go, no, you're, it's your duty to try and, try and get the situation fixed. You know, some people can only be reasoned with so much, but you shouldn't just write it off as, well, I didn't mean any ill will and leave it at that. You, you should try and get the situation fixed. It's, it's your responsibility. It's not if you have something against somebody, but if you know someone has an issue with you. And it even says here, leave your gift right there at the altar. You're literally to drop everything and go try and make this situation right with your brother. It says before you get yourself straightened out, you are to get your relationship with those around you situated. You know, how many people that have uh, first come to the Lord or even people in programs like AA or anything like that, one of the first things they got to do is they got to go around to the people that they hurt and they got to ask for forgiveness. They got to, you know, hey, I did wrong. I put it out there. And, you know, even when you first get saved, that's one of the things. You, you People that you've wronged or hurt in the past, you, you almost have that yearning to go and, hey, I got to make this right. You know, I, 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 did, I did you dirty. Let me, let me try and situate, fix this situation, you know, now that I'm seeing things clearly. The other place I wanted to go, uh, 1 John 3, if you have a digital Bible, you can get there pretty quick. But it's 1 John 3, and we're going to go to 13. If you don't, that's fine. I'm, you know, I'm going to read it anyway. It says, Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we know, because, because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. We're literally, didn't Ishtiak say that? We're on a different level last week you know just being born again and being in this in this line of thinking you're already on a different level than the rest of the world we know that we're finally living unlike the world which is spiritually dead just not living in the slightest anger and hate doesn't produce life in fact it does the opposite it, it, it brings death you know as i said that that murder started in the heart with that anger it leads to death it all comes down to death if you do not love your brother, you're literally living in death. You're not living in life. If you move on, it says, whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay our, down, our lives down for the brethren. As Jesus said, murder began in the heart. Everything starts as an idea in our imagination. It eventually manifests into something more. And, you know, he used, that as, he used Jesus as the example here. Because he laid down his life, true love is what Jesus did at the cross. There's no greater, there, there was never, is never, and will never be another greater expression of love than what he did. That there was never and will never be a greater showing of that love than what he, his sacrifice that he did for us and it even says in there that you're supposed to lay down your life we're to be imitators to be the body of christ now obviously we can't put our lives on the line in the same way that jesus did you know you don't want me trying to atone for anything you've done that's it's it's not going to work he was the only perfect one the only one that could do it and the only thing that was appeasing to god to be in that position so what does he mean then when you have to lay your life down? You can do that by many ways. Stand, standing by someone's side when they have no one else. You know, if you see somebody that's getting a bad rap or you know that they didn't do something and you go to stand up to them, that can hurt your reputation. That can hurt your life. That can, that can literally hurt you just as much as it's hurting the other person. Don't just stand by and let them get taken out for no reason. You can stick up for someone who doesn't have means to defend themselves. You know, you see somebody getting their butt handed to them on a, you know, in a store. You, you, if you have the means to help them, that can be helping them. 
it, and it's putting your life out there too because I might turn around on you. Or it could ultimately, like a bodyguard, taking a bullet for somebody. It's laying their life down for that other person, for your brother. It doesn't have to necessarily be that way. Like I said, you know, if whatever the situation calls for, you're supposed to think of that person more so than yourself. If you go down to the next one, it says, but whoever has the, wor the world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? You know, I would like to think that any one of us, you know, seeing a homeless guy on the corner would stop and wah wah, grab him a sandwich and a water or something and throw it to him. You know, what seems something trivial to us might mean the world to somebody else. And if God has seen the means of blessing you with material things, whether it be money or anything along them lines, then we should have no issue using that to show his love and further the kingdom. You using what he has given you to show that love to somebody else. You know, it reminds me. There was one time I went out. I went to Wawa, and the re, reason I'm going to say that is you shouldn't just squander it though either. Use use it rightly. I went to Wawa one time, and on my way inside, there was a guy leaning on the trash can. Didn't think anything of it. He was dressed clean, had a clean shirt on. He had clean pants on. He's leaning on the side of the trash can, smoking a cigarette. I go to walk in. As soon as I grab the door, he says, sir, can I speak to you for a moment? Now, the guy's got to be in his 40s or 50s calling me, sir. So I was like, okay, this should be good. So I stopped, turned around. <laughs> I said, what, what's, what's up? And he goes, you mind if I ask you for uh, some money? He goes, I need medication for, and I forget what he said. He had some sort of sickness. So first thing that ran through my mind was, well, I don't see why he would need my money. He's got the nice clothes on. He's dressed fairly nice. He doesn't look like he's a bum. And to be honest, the next thought was he had enough money for a pack of cigarettes. So, you know, why is he asking me? But at the same time, I didn't just blow him off. I said, and I wasn't lying to the guy. I said, you know, I don't have money in my wallet. I, I was actually going into pool money out. I said, but how about this? I said, are you hungry? And he just looked at me and, he didn't, and I said, look, I ain't got cash to give you for your for your uh, medication, I said, but if, you, if you're that strapped and you're that hard up, I said, I can, I said, if you want a sandwich or a hot dog and a soda or something, I said, I'm going into Wawa. In fact, I'm going to grab myself some lunch. I have no, you need, you need something. And he just goes, no, I'm good. And he, and, and he just turned around and walked away. You know, he didn't want to take the, chari the charity that I was willing to give him. So he just didn't get what, it wanted, what he wanted and he walked away. But at the same time, I didn't, I didn't just turn the guy away. I did offer him what I could. I, I didn't feel comfortable giving him that. So I, I, hey, I have no problems helping you in another way. It says, you, um, okay, yeah, sorry, I lost my place. I would like to think any of us would do that. What seems like something trivial to us might mean the world to somebody else. God gave his only begotten son to be killed in our place. The only person who ever walked this earth who could truly say they never deserved to die. If he was willing to show his love for us in such a manner, why couldn't we show it in something as trivial as, as sticking up for somebody, giving them, giving them what they need, or doing what we need to do? You know, he showed the ultimate sacrifice. Any sacrifice that we can give now is, is, is peanuts compared to what he did. And uh, one of the last one, I want to go to the last one, Galatians 3, 26. This is one of my favorite verses to go to especially talking to people because uh, I, I have a friend who, who, you know, he'll say, well, that was only for the Jews and this, that, and the other. And he's like, why do you, why do you do this? And why do you do that? And, you know, he's like, you got, you guys practice slavery just as much as anyone else. He's one of them guys who's very controversial and he doesn't, he tries to throw anything and everything in your face. Galatians three twenty six is one of my favorite verses to go to. It says, for you are all sons of God's through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You know, this world has come up with more than enough ways to divide all of us economically, racially, gender, denomination, even down to who likes Coke or Pepsi. It's come to more 
than enough ways to divide us and keep us all separated, when in reality, there's only one thing that separates any of us, those who are of the world and those who are in Christ. That's literally the only separation that should be in any, anybody's thought or mind. Those who love him or hating, those who see that there is more to this life than what we see, and those who only deal with the physically, physically seen realm that they deal with. And, you know, in that passage, it says as, as all of us as the body, as believers together, there is, there is no separation. There's neither the Jew nor the Greek. There is no slave. There is no free. There's nothing. We're all the same as brothers and sisters in Christ. That's the only thing that needs to, needs to be on anybody's mind. So having anger in your heart towards your brother is not the godly way of thinking. Don't let anger take root in you. Seek to solve the problem and get on the same page as the people around you. Standing by and doing nothing while your brother suffers can be just as bad as the suffering itself. If you have the means to help in some capacity, be an example of the Father's love by doing what you can. And as believers, there would be, there should be nothing dividing us. Even if you don't agree with somebody on one particular doctrine or practice or what have you, there is still one thing we should all be able to agree upon, the love of Christ and the ultimate price he paid for all of us. The truth is, we're all in this together. We all come from a common ancestor in Adam and Eve, the birth of mankind. Everything this world has to offer has only divided us instead of uniting us. God's ideal plan is that we be united as one body with one spirit, being one bride. The Bible speaks of division, but that division boils down to those who hear the truth and those who reject it. With all this talk of what separates us, let's focus on what joins us together as believers, that we all are bought with the same blood, that we all have the same Father, and that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus gave us a good example, and I think he wraps all of this up in one simple parable. It's one of my favorites, is the Good Samaritan. And that's how I want to end this particular one. I just want to read that whole parable, the Good Samaritan, which is Luke 10, 25, if you, if you wanted to go there. It says, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. He said, teacher, what must I do to inherit inter eternal life? Jesus responded, he goes, what's written in the law? How do I read it? So he was asking him to clarify, how should I be reading? The, what's the law saying? How should I be reading it? The guy answered, says, love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you have answered correctly. Do this and you'll live. But he wanted to justify himself. He asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? So Jesus replied with this parable to him. He goes, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. He said, look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expenses that you had. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell to the hands of the robbers? The expert in law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus just told him, go and do likewise. So, you know, the, the, this guy, the other two, they saw him and they, they, they literally crossed the street to not be in his path they literally walked around him on the other side of the street but this guy who didn't have any dealings with him didn't know who he was didn't 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 have any obligation to do what he had to do what he did took it upon himself to make sure that this guy was taken care of and even even promised to come back and rectify any payments that needed to be done he, he took it he took it the extra mile you know, he could have dropped him off there and left, but he said, hey, I'm going to come back. Anything more that you had to pay, you know, I'll take care of that too. 
And of course the guy couldn't, how are you going to deny that? Which one was the, who, which one was like a neighbor to him? And he was like, well, the, the guy that took mercy on him. And I, I think that's where, where we're at today. Like I said earlier, an apostle said this, all this stuff has been distraction, distraction after distraction after distraction. And I think we need to remember where we should be with each, especially with each other, you know, brethren, brethren, brethren. I know it's, um, it, that's usually with a, in our little group, you know, br brethren born again, you know, somebody within the church or what have you. But like Jesus said, who was the neighbor? You know, it, it, it brethren is just your other fellow man. You, even if they're not a believer, you don't treat them any different than you would somebody else. You don't try to get one over on anybody. That's not how this world works. That's how they want it to work, but that's not how it should. That's not, that's not the godly way of doing things. And that's just, that's, it's really been just distraction after distraction. And I think we need to remember that that's all it is, is a distraction. And I, I, I don't buy into any of it. I, I don't, I, I don't watch the news. I don't wa I don't use Facebook. I have it, but I don't use it. I don't look at any of this stuff just because I already know what it is. It's things to get my eyes off of what I should be focusing on. And you, you shouldn't take the bait of how they are and that's all this rioting and stuff has been going on i understand it's for a, a, a reason absolutely i wouldn't deny anybody that but at the same time you're missing the big picture it's not one particular group that's getting you know thrown under the bus ultimately we all are because when you your little group's getting thrown under the bus it just causes strife between me and you you know, just because of what, the color of our skin, it's stupid. It's, it's the stupidest thing I could ever hear. You know, everybody should be on the same page. We should all be looking to better our lives for each other. And we should, like I said, remember one thing. We all got the same father. We all got the same blood bought price on our heads. We all go to where truth is, and we know what the truth really is. There's only one truth, and that's Jesus, as he said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's the only thing we need to be worried about, only thing we got to be focused on, and the only thing that should have any bearing in our lives right now, especially right now. So I just want to thank you, Lord. I thank you for everybody in my life. I thank you that I have these people to fellowship with. I thank you, Father, that you have given me such wonderful brothers and sisters in the Lord that I can rely on, that I can come to. I thank you, Lord, that you have just put great blessings over not only myself, but everybody here. I thank you, Father, for all that you're doing, all that you will do, all that you have already done. And I just thank you, Lord, for this unity that we have. In Jesus' in the mighty name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Thank amen. you, Pastor Ryan. Good word today. That's something that we needed uh, to hear and um, just the kind of tap into what he was saying in Romans chapter 12, verse 18, it says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So we have to do our part to be at peace uh, and not be part of the distraction and not be part of the division. Um, and, and, and then it's right. There is, there's distractions out there. We got to see the bigger picture. We need to see what's really taking place. A lot of people say God is shaking things, but I say that there is wickedness in high places that are trying to divide us. And that is what's really taking place. And it's wickedness in high places. And our, uh, our, 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 we wrestle not with flesh and blood, right? We, but with principalities, powers and rulers of darkness and wickedness in high places so you cannot deal with these things in the natural realm because in the natural realm you'll get frustrated you'll get angry you'll get you'll get in your spirit but that's why god has given you the power of intercession and the power of prayer and the power of unity to d defeat these things because we we repeat this scripture over and over and over again but sometimes we don't get it in our spirit that our weapons of warfare are not carnal in the spirit realm, right? But they are mighty through God, demolishing every stronghold. So these things that we're facing are strongholds. They're strongholds over our community. They're strongholds over our, over our government. They're strongholds in, in play, people that 
uh, want to devise evil. Uh, and, you know, and I have said this many, many times that there is a spirit uh, that wants to bring uh, a spiritual civil war, especially in the body of Christ. And there are those that are race baiters. They're, they're going to want to bait you into things and they're going to want to draw you into the conversation. And, and, and please, whatever you do, never apologize for being who you are and the color of your skin. Never apologize for that because if, 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 if you have to apologize for that, then you need to go to God and say, hey, you messed up. You messed up. You made me the wrong color. No, but see, that's what a lot of people want to do right now. They're trying to bait you and trap you, but use discernment. In, in these things. And, uh, and, you know, when you think about the Civil War uh, in our country, just think on both sides of the Union Army and, and the Confederate Army, they were godly men on both sides. Both of them attended church. Both of them worshiped. Both of them, both even the generals would use scriptures and all this other things. And, 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 but there was a division in the country and lives were lost because of it. But God always sides on the side of righteousness, you know, so uh, we are in a righteous cause right now in a righteous fight. And, um, and it's not black and white, it's evil versus good. And that's what it is. But the enemy will use all kinds of avenues and all kinds of ways to uh, bait you in. And uh, yeah, it can get to you because we see the truth. And we see a lot of things that are trying to um, cause such a great division. But I believe, listen, but God has a plan still for our country. And, uh, and I'm going to continue to declare that, decree it. Uh, and and, and God's glory to go throughout the earth in Jesus' mighty name. So I want to thank everybody for coming in and uh, thank Helen Mary and Bob and Connie for, for joining us today. We're blessed. And, and I just got a word for uh, them there. And, and I just, as we were going through this and praying, um, that I seen that you guys were on a, on a wall and I had prayed about standing in the gap and intercession. And I know you guys are intercessors. Uh, I just really believe God's going to take you. Uh, it, it's, it's what we've been talking about. Um, uh, first day, second day, third day. A lot of people are first day Christians, you know, they're born again. Hurrah, I'm going to heaven. And then there's second day Christians, you know, they, the Pentecost and, and, you know, the, the, the fire and the spirit and, you know, but then there's the third day Christian and beyond where we're going to go into uh, truly the mysteries of God and, 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 and different realms and dimensions. And I believe God's going to take you guys into that place of intercession. So uh, first off, I, I appreciate uh, Helen Mary and Bob and Connie who, who, who continue to pray and support the ministry, but they're intercessors. And, and I just pre believe a greater anointing's coming on you guys. And I, I know you guys are muted, but uh, I, I really believe a greater anointing. And, and, and you guys are going to be seers, not just intercessors. You see, see uh, intercessors are also seers as well. They see so that they can inter uh, intercede, if that makes any sense. So I release that word of the Lord for you. And, and, and we thank you for holding up the hedge. I thank you for standing in the gap for our ministry and, 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 and what's happening and taking place and standing firm for righteousness and the cause of righteousness. So we appreciate you guys. I see if you want to say anything, go ahead. I see you unmuted, but if you wanted to confirm that. But there was a confirmation of the word today, folks. You know, we started out talking about the reverence of God and Lynette talking about the, the light of the world. And then Ryan comes in with this from Matthew chapter five. That tells me the Holy Spirit is, 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 is ministering to us, is speaking to us. 
and and we need to continue to hold on, stay faithful. You know, those who who endure to the end shall be saved. And there's a lot of things that are rocking the boat, but uh, you know, there's a. Sh- I'm, I'm, I might release a word that I gave. I, vi- I audio, uh, and I'm going to release it again. It's called uh, "Shake and Awake," and you know. And there's going to be some shaking going in and shaking going out. And, uh, but so we're, we're just grateful of God's faithfulness uh, to us. And um, so we bless you guys today. Um, and I, I want us to continue to pray on how we're going to move forward. And I, I want you to give me your suggestions. You don't have to do it now. Pray on it. You can either text me or we can give you about a week until next Sunday. And then we can talk about how we're going to move forward. If we're going to meet physically and do zoom, you know, uh, I shared an example. If Ryan's not going to minister that day, we can meet still, but have, I was going to think about asking apostle John Morningstar to come in and minister one week where we could still congregate and he can bring the word of the Lord uh, uh, to us so we can continue to use our zoom meetings and stuff like that. So it, it's a great way. And, and it's an inexpensive a way of not using great expense where we can have people from all over the world and all over the country minister at new birth without the cost of bringing them in and asking Helen, uh, asking Bob and Connie and Helen Mary to put them up for us. But, uh, but um, so, so a lot of things, uh, we can think about, you know, um, so I really want to hear from you how we want to move forward. And I will take all everybody's consideration and, um, and just pray and we need to pray on it because I think at some point we need to physically come together. And so we can uh, pr- pray with one another like we do now, but fellowship is going to be key and we need it. You know what I mean? And uh <laughs> And I, and I think when the, when a, when a restaurant opens, I'm going to, I'm going to have a fellowship time. I'm just going to get together, sit down and, and talk to one another again. Right? I'm, I, like this, I'm living in this virtual reality you know, and I can't uh, reach out and touch yeah. you guys or hold, you know, but, um, but it's been, but I'm thankful that we have this uh, zoom that we could still congregate and meet and not have any, have anything at all. So God's been really good and been faithful uh, to us. Is there any thoughts of what you heard today? Any comments, observation, or maybe a suggestion before we close the meeting today? I'd love to hear from you. Steve? Yeah, I think the Zoom has got a lot of potential to bring people in like Ishtiak where we can have a a service once in a while and enjoy the people that are further away and have, um, you know, uh, that exciting part. That was exciting to have Ishtiak talk and preach to us last Sunday. It was a good word. Yeah, I think that's, you know, and, and Ryan has a big screen TV. Like, we have a big one. Mom's watching the big screen TV while – you know, um, while Ryan was ministering. So we could still, if Ryan says, yeah, we could, we could do it at my place, but we can all be there and Ishtiak or someone can be still ministering and we can just kind of do that once in a while. You know, I think that's a great, a great opportunity. So anyone else? Love to hear from you. I got something. Go ahead. I, um, even you, uh, like you said, that uh, we only meet at Ryan's twice a month, starting out and everything. We could still do the Zoom on the other on the off days. You know, we don't. It's up. You know, it's all really up to everybody else who wants to minister too. Even if Ryan's gonna just do twice a month. Yeah. And the on the off days, we could still do the Zoom, and he, you know. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's a- I sort of second that. I have missed not having it weekly, and yeah. having it weekly like this even allows like I can still go to the Delaware House on the weekend and still participate because I can 
in and have everything set up. So Amen. I, I, I think it's important that we get back to doing weekly, uh, keeping weekly, we are doing weekly, but I agree that back to seeing each other is important too, because we need to have that time to be together. Right. Amen. We could even have church at the Delaware house. And Amen. <laughs> And zoom somebody in. Wouldn't that be awesome? We have that freedom to go down there, and that that would be exciting. I would love that, but that's that would be obviously uh, Dina's decision. But you know, the, everything's kind of muffled right now with all this phases. You know, I'm not. I'm losing track of yellow yeah. phase, blue phase, green phase. You know, and I just think we just need to just let the American people be set free. And we're smart people, I know, you know, but, but on the other hand, you know, we need to gradually work our way into, uh, to meeting uh, together physically, you know. Um, so, you know what oh. I find funny about green phase, you know, because of doing flag and banner, we do colors a lot. And green is new birth. Yeah, amen. Once we hit that green phase, it's new birth. New, new life again, new beginnings, new, new birth. Yeah. And uh, so, um, so okay, and that, that's, still, that's good. I'll be praying on that. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll be in touch with Pastor Ryan again to see if we'll uh, wait till the following week to, to maybe do something at his home. And, uh, but he'll be bringing the word again this weekend. And uh, so I'm going to try to get some people in rotation and also get some people from the outside to come in on. And uh, I'm thinking about asking Apostle John to minister a word of the Lord to us in a few weeks. And uh, so a anybody else love, are, are we good? Some of these suggestions are good. Oh, I didn't have a suggestion further on that. I just have a statement. Go ahead. Isn't somebody's birthday tomorrow? Oh, it's Lynette's birthday. <laughs> we have to bring that up. <laughs> She's fifty-four. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm fifty-four. <laughs> and mine's the following week when I hit fifty, the milestone. <laughs> Woo! I'm become old man. My jubilee year, though. My jubilee year has been full of excitement, right? I mean, got all this stuff going on. I'll never forget my 50th, that's a new for sure. man, not an old man, a new man. <laughs> <laughs> a new man. Yeah. So, but yeah, happy birthday to Lynette, right? Amen. So Amen. If you can remember tomorrow, shoot her a text yeah. and wish her a happy birthday. So, a lot of birthdays in June. My mom's birthday is in June. She'll be sure, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> How old? 74. Woohoo! I'm going to be 74. 70 She's 20 years older than me. <laughs> so it's interesting. My daughter will be turning 25 in August. My I'll be 50 next week, and my dad turns 75. So there we there's a these nice birthdays coming along. So but anyway, let's pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you, Father. I thank you for every person that's present here today and not present. Father, I pray for James, who has an assignment. We thank you, Lord, for James and fulfill that assignment today and encourage him and strengthen him in that assignment. And uh, Father, I thank you for Dina, who puts all this together and helps me puts it together i thank you for her administrative skills which is a gift and it's in the word Amen. it's a gift she helps with the school she's keeping everything going on with the school and i thank you she's a great help to me and i thank you for her lord god bless her today bless her tremendously today even in her transition father with work and, and, and new ownership. That can be a scary thing, but Lord, you will give her wisdom and you will see her through. What, sometimes when God closes one door, he opens 
a new one for you. So never think that closed doors are, are something bad, but they're, uh, it represents a new door to open. So Father, I thank you for Pastor Ryan and Gabrielle. They, what a wonderful job they're doing in ministering the word of the Lord to us. And none of their work is in vain. All the time that he's put in was of the Lord and it was straight to the heart. That word was straight to the heart. So we ask that you bless their home with abundance, Father, and everything that the enemy wants to burn down will be restored a hundredfold in the name of Jesus, hundredfold for him, Father. I thank you for Steve, Lord, who's holding up that gate in, in his part of town, Father God, and we can continue to pray. Uh, when I was over his house, the other place the other day, going into his backyard, there's that nice little door you have, like it's a gate kind of door. So you're holding up the gate in that region of town and we thank you for him, Lord. And uh, the word that he gave last week was a word of uh, brokenness, but God is near to those who are brokenhearted and contrite in spirit. And we bless him and bless his home. I thank you for Lynette and uh, uh, 28 years together with her and and Lord, I pray long life, blessings on her, Lord, and uh, thank you for the mother she is, the wife she is, the grandmother she is, Father God. And she is a Proverbs 31 woman, we bless her. I thank you for Helen Mary and Connie and Bob and their friendship, they don't know how much it means that their friendship means to us. And even though we don't talk Often, I know their friendship is strong and their text messages are, 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 are salve to the, to the heart, Lord God. We bless their home. Today, they're going to be filled with abundance. I release that to them in the name of Jesus. Father, for Tracy there and Rita and Paul, thank you for the healing presence of Jesus in their lives. And each day, they're finding strength and each day, they're finding wisdom, Father God. My battery's ready to go dead. So, Father, I just <laughs> bless my son, my daughter who's on, my, my granddaughter who's there, too. I release blessings on your life. The, the light's flashing. So, bless your homes today. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I bless you guys. We'll be in touch, and I'll blessings let you know back. what we're going to be doing. Okay. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Bye. Uh, Bye. 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 Oh, Dean, are you going to be home tomorrow? Uh, yes. Okay, because I can. I get. I'm going back to work tomorrow. Are you going to be home around like three ish? Yeah, I don't go into the office tomorrow. Okay, uh, then I'm just going to swing by after work. I get done at three, and I work right there in town, so I'll swing by.